All right, guys, got a 23 Camry here. Only got 950 miles. Not sure what this lady bumped into, but they just dropped it off a second ago when we repaired the bumper here. So we're gonna heat this area, get this body line back straight, and then this one also, and then just do a, a, a fill coat here if we have to. Probably definitely need something in there and uh, prime all that. And I'm gonna try to blend clear right into here where it's only about an inch wide instead of going all the way across since there's really not that many rock chips if any in this thing yet so I'm not too worried about painting over anything I'll just paint half the bumper and I won't have to get into this since it's separated by this grill but I do need to get it off start heating it up okay it's basically off it just pops out of these clips on the side here I just reach down with some pressure on the bumper and lift lift this little hook off of this tab. There's just three of those, a little tiny clip in this hole, and then they snap in right here. You do these little snaps, and there's about seven or eight, maybe ten, uh, ten millimeters all along the bottom. And then the closeout panel here has about five clips in it, and there's four of these ten millimeters across the top. And this one's got a connector here on this module. Okay, got it flipped over, ready to take all the grills out. There's just a bunch of screws around the perimeter. And once I get this thing off, it's gonna be really flimsy. The bumper's only about a half inch thick under here. So I'm gonna have to get some uh, fixtures rigged up here to hold this thing on a stand while I do the repair. This one does have to come off because I'm gonna have to tape or I'd have to tape it off here and I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna take the whole grill out even though I don't have to paint the top section. I'm um, gonna take all of it out basically, but I'm gonna stop the paint halfway across. Under here, I don't have to worry about it. I'll just paint all the way to maybe right in here. I'm gonna go through and get all these screws. There's probably 15 screws in this thing and then start popping the clips out. Okay, just finished the bottom part. I pushed this out before I even pulled the bumper off. Just need a little work right in here. Bottom, I just got nice and warm and took the back end of a uh, pry tool here. It's kind of domed on the back and I just ran it. You can see the marks. While it was hot, I just ran it back and forth just to kind of stretch it back out. Get the curve back in it. It's 98% it's, uh, gone now. So the primer will take care of all that. And this underneath is pretty much perfect. I don't see any waves at all in it, so. Mainly just need primer here. I may need some filler here. I'm gonna to try to get away with not having to fill it just because it'll be faster anyway. And no filler is always best. Uh, I got a little bit up here with a kink. Right in here. And most of it is from really from here up. Now, I'm gonna work this out first, get the body line nice and straight. And then that way it'll kind of lock this in place and I'll work on all this around the body line after. All right, I just heated this area up where the, most of the damage was. There was a tight crown right in here. Everything below the body line actually came out on its own with, just with heat. I haven't done anything here except for this one little spot. Right there you can see where I had to push that in. I was using this uh, this PDR knockdown. I'm pressing in with it hot, almost at its melting point, and pushing this in and letting it cool. Everything that's still there will come out with, when I sand it with uh, 180. This is really the only place up here that I had to actually do any, any work. I'm trying to not put any filler in this. You can see I've got a few dimples here just in the, in the texture. Doing the same thing up here at this crown, just working it down all around until I got, got this bump out of it right here. It's nice and smooth. You can see in the metallic, there's not a ridge left in it now. And once I get all of this sanded, all these dimples will be gone, so I'll be down to the plastic. Same thing up here, there was a little bit of a ridge through here. That's fairly flat, just dimpled. So once I sand all this out, I should be able to go straight to primer. 
I've got to feather this deep one here out. I think I can get out uh, all of that without having to use any filler. The rest of it's just nicks. Like right in here. And there's one back here where this thing rubbed the fender. So I'll have to prime basically the back, the whole back end of the bumper. And I may end up going around all the way around with the clear since this car is brand new. It's only maybe a, less than a month old. Just take the clear all the way around just in case they keep this car a while. I don't want any kind of an edge here showing or peeling. I don't think it ever would, but with it being brand new, I can go all the way across it. There's no rock chips in it really to worry about. So I'm gonna start sanding all this out. I shouldn't have to go past about right here, feathering all this out. Get some primer on this thing. Okay, all feathered out and taped up for primer. I feathered all these these damaged areas out with 180. And as soon as I got it to feather, I went switched to 400 on all this. So everything's finished out in 400. I'm gonna go ahead and prime it all the way over to here. There's no point in putting a feather edge in the primer right here when I can just stop it here and not have to worry about a feather edge showing. I am gonna have to feather it right in here. But you can see where I scuffed. That's 400. Here where it's dull and that scuff pad where I just ran over the edge. I'll stop the primer at the end of the 400 so I can feather back into it. I've got some of this uh, 2330 left over that I'm gonna finish off on, on these spots. I've switched to the 310 uh, aerosol. So I'm just gonna use this up on this job since it's just a few small spots. I got about half an ounce left in the can maybe. Get rid of that. Okay, it's all primed up. Got two coats down here, three in this area, and then I put a fourth right in here where I had to sand down to the plastic just to make sure I've got plenty to block it off. So I'll sand at least a coat to, or two off right in here. And I may end up going all the way around with the clear. I'll have to see. It's not gonna be that much area to prep. I just don't want any issues uh, right in here. I may decide to clear the whole thing since it's just this one little spot at the top mainly and wraps down. This is hardly anything here. It doesn't even go all the way across. I'm gonna bake this with the infrared light for about 30 minutes. And I may hit it again in the morning and uh, do it one more time before I sand it. I'll, I'll break it open with uh, some 400 and then bake it again, let the rest of the solvent get out. And I'll, I'll plan, on, uh, plan on painting it tomorrow afternoon. Okay, it's all blocked out, feathered. Didn't have to use any filler. I had to block this area right in here. You can maybe see some rings in the primer there where I blocked through the layers. There's a little bit of a low spot right in here when I just feathered everything out of that scratch, but I think the rest of it was pretty much gone just from heat. I did block this area right in here where I had the dimples. Looks to me like everything's straight. This is wax and grease remover that's on it. I think I am gonna stop the clear over here. I got plenty of room, looks like. I'm gonna stop the color somewhere right under here to where the uh, part gets narrow. And I can bring the clear over to right here. That'll save me all this time sanding this. And this will all be original. I've had a repair on my wife's car for about 13, 14 years where I did that on the rear. And it still really doesn't show. So I think this will be fine. Okay, ready to paint. Just need to mask this area off. Doesn't really matter if paint gets on it, but I don't want dust settling in these pockets and blowing out my clear later, so I'm just gonna mask it. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about this area, but I'm just gonna go around this, down through the bottom, and just take a piece of paper and push it through here and tape it to the back just to cover this, you know, 80% of it up. I've got this. This I started with 400 grit and then took it out to 600 with the DA, everywhere I could get the DA and then scuff pad everywhere else, just to get around the edges, uh, red scuff pad. Right in here, I feathered this out with some 600 and uh, 
with the DA and then 1,000 in here by hand all the way across to right about here. And from here to here is 3,000 grit uh, Trizac disc. I just did it by hand all the way to right here. You can see it gets a little bit dull. So that's polishable. You can get that out with uh, really easy with compound. So I'll take the clear to right here and then the first coat and then the second coat I'll come over to the center and then I'll spray on some uh, clear blender right there and just extend it over into where I sanded and come back and maybe buff just a little bit, whatever's there. I'm gonna get set up here and uh, spray adhesion promoter uh, to right here. I don't need it anywhere, I've got primer, but right up to here and over will be adhesion promoter. And then I'll do the, the straight to base coat and then the clear. Okay, ready to go here. Gotta do a wipe down to clean it. And like I said, I'll put the adhesion promoter from the edge of the primer over to the entire, uh, cover the entire area where I'm gonna blend it. So all of this will be adhesion promoter just across the top. And once I have that on, I'm gonna lay a loose piece of paper over uh, this entire upper area where I just won't clear. And I'll keep the color away from that edge, but it'll also keep the overspray from getting on this part. And then I'll uncover that when I go to clear it, but the color will stay in this area just along the bottom. All right, this is 222S adhesion promoter. color and blend it into that. This will probably take three coats. I'm just trying to go light on it since it's kind of cold and it's going to sit there for a minute. I've got a mid temp producer in it, but I don't want to run it and I don't want to get the feather edges uh, dissolved. Okay, base coat's done. Got four coats and a drop coat. I checked the color uh, with the spray out card right here and I tore the paper open and checked it on the bumper and it's probably as close as it's going to get. It's pretty close already, but uh, get the clear on it. Should be fine. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, an hour or two since I cleared it. Turned out really nice. Really clean. There's any trash, at least in the top. There's a little right in here. Just barely, but I don't think there's really any in the top. Here's the blend, clear blend. There's a little fog right, right in there. I don't have to just rub out with some compound, but other than that, it's just about where you could leave it. I wanted to leave it on the stand here to put the grill in, but the hook I've got here is going to get covered up. So I'll have to pull it off and I'll lay it across my fold out stand with the extension that'll hold it underneath the bottom on each end and I can put the grill in. I don't want to flex this thing after, uh, after I've painted it now and snap the paint or anything. Even though there's flex additive in it, you never know. All right, I was able to put the grill in with it on the stand. There's just enough room here to clear the hook. I was planning to just clip it on in the middle to keep the bumper shape, at least the top over to here and then these two clips and leave this unclipped until I got it off the stand, but it went ahead and went ahead and clipped it all in. Now I'll take it off now that this will hold the shape 
and I'll, I'll snap these other ones in once I get it off the stand so that I can get this, get this hook out of here. Okay, all reassembled. Color match really well. I'm just gonna blow the leaves off that need to be washed. See you on the next one.